Our mapping infrastructure is almost complete. Now that we have imported the FGDC standardized geologic map symbols, we must pick and choose the ones we want to use specifically for our mapping area. In this video, we will build feature class layer symbology for the map border, for geologic contacts, and for linear features. Let's begin with the map border. To change its symbology, navigate to the contents pane and double click the line underneath the map border feature class layer. The symbology pane will appear on the right hand side of the screen. Click on the properties tab. The default symbol format happens to be a green line with a one point width. I am going to change it to a solid black. The main purpose of the map border is for snapping geologic contacts and generating map unit polygons, which we will do in later videos. I prefer a thicker line width for the map border to hide some of the imperfections along the edges of the hillshade. These are likely artifacts from the original projection that we did on the initial digital elevation model. But before we draw our map border, let's finish the symbology for the other feature class layers. Next, let's do geologic contacts. Another way to access the symbology pane is to right click the feature class layer in the contents pane and click symbology. Note how the primary symbology for geologic contacts is set to single symbol. Of course, geologic maps have many different symbols, so we must click the drop down menu and select unique values. Remember how we added a type field when building the geo contacts feature class? Change the field one drop down menu to type. With this type field, we can now generate multiple different types of contact symbols. To begin adding new symbols, click on the plus icon to add unlisted values. Click on the options in the top right and click add new value. For this project, we will add the three most widely used geologic contact symbols, accurate, approximate, and concealed. First, double click on the line symbol and click on the gallery tab. Here we see all our FGDC symbols. If you hover over any symbol, you will see the unique reference number and some tags that describe the symbol. For more detailed descriptions of the symbols, be sure to refer back to your FGDC PDF in the SP Tutorial Data folder. Symbol 010101 is a geologic contact with existence certain and location accurate. It is depicted as a solid black line. Select this symbol. For the value, name this symbol certain. Then click on the label column. By default, it will auto fill the label as the value name. We will discuss map labels more in a later video. Next, add a new value, this time selecting the dashed black line for an approximate geologic contact. Lastly, repeat this process once more, adding a dotted black line for a concealed geologic contact. As a post-production caveat, it should be said that for all three of these geologic contacts, the existence is certain and that the locations are either accurate, approximate, or concealed. Once you have specified the three contacts, click on Options, Select All, then OK at the bottom right. Note how the three new symbol classes now appear in the Symbology pane as well as the Contents pane. Now let's update our symbology for the linear features layer. Open the symbology pane for linear features. Like with geo contacts, we need to switch the primary symbology to unique values. Again, change field one to type, then click on the plus icon to add unlisted values. For this project, since we identified a Graben structure, we will need to add normal fault symbology. Like with geologic contacts, we will add accurate, approximate, and concealed varieties for these normal faults. Another linear feature we will include is a line symbol for the crater rims of the volcanic vents. Let's start with the fault symbols. Click Options, Add New Value. There are hundreds of FGDC symbols. Luckily, you can use the search bar in the gallery to quickly find symbols. Search Normal Fault. Symbol 221 is a normal fault, existence certain, location accurate.
Repeat these steps for approximate and concealed. Click Options, select All, then Add Values. In retrospect, if you are mapping many kinds of linear features in your study area, for example, faults, geomorphic features, volcanic features, hydrologic features, you would want to add additional fields to your linear features feature class for each different symbol set. In other words, instead of a generic field named type that houses all your linear features, you would have separate fields called faults, geomorphic features, volcanic features, and hydrologic features. By doing this, your layer symbology and your explanation of map symbols legend on your final map product would be better organized. Now let's add a linear feature map symbol for the crater rims of the volcanic vents in our study area. I am going to refer to my FGDC map symbols PDF because I want to make sure that I'm using the correct volcanic symbology. Like the search bar in Arc Pro, I can press Ctrl F on the keyboard to search for a keyword in the FGDC PDF. Search for crater. This word is mentioned 168 times in the PDF. Luckily, the first result brings me to section 18, volcanic features. Symbol 18.1 is described as the rim of a volcanic crater. The hatchers on the symbol point to the crater. Again, note how there are variants for accurate, approximate, and concealed. In our study area, I think we can confidently map these features accurately, so we will just import the accurate variety. Back to Arc Pro, let's search for crater. The first result is 18.1 and matches the description for an accurate volcanic crater. Let's add it. Nice work. In the next video, we will build polygon symbology for our geologic units.